How much the most advanced aircraft carrier costs? Hello and welcome to an exciting new video. The USS Gerald R. Ford has been on a fast pace to launch a succession of new technologies meant to improve the Navy's striking capability for at least the next 50 years, making it the most expensive single item on the Department of Defense's shopping list. It's a project that began two decades ago and has suffered delays and cost overruns in the hundreds of millions of dollars. Stick with the video till the end to know the complete details. And do not forget to like and subscribe to the channel for the more exciting content. Now, let's begin. Two decades ago, the Navy began investing in the Ford in 2001, with $21 million spent on planned preparation and other activities. The Navy was aiming for a multi-step process to introduce all of the features proposed by its carrier working group for its next-generation carrier. A new nuclear plant, new types of catapults, and arresting gear to increase the number of sorties the air wing could fly. A new flight deck layout, new radar, new anti-aircraft and missile defense weapons, and a new way of arming and moving weapons from magazines at the time. The idea was to start with the Nimitz-class carrier, which would eventually become the USS George H.W. Bush when it was commissioned in 2009. The first ship of the class, the Ford, would have more, with the second, the John F. Kennedy, having everything up and running. The notion did not sit well with Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld, a veteran naval aviator. He determined that the $10 billion price tag for the first transitional carrier didn't buy enough of a warfighting advantage over the $4 billion Nimitz-class Ronald Reagan, which was under construction at the time. Pace quickens. The pace of spending on the Ford quickly increased – $135 million in fiscal year 2002, $395 million in 2003, and $1.16 billion in 2004. When the Navy paid General Electric $928 million for the nuclear reactor, on top of the $410 million previously spent, the Navy had spent $1.49 billion on design work and planning at the shipyard by the end of 2007. However, two years after the yard began cutting steel for the ship, the planning and design work was still incomplete. The total planning costs for the Ford were estimated at $2.35 billion in the Navy's original cost estimates. By that time, payments to the yard for some of the propulsion and electrical system work had totaled $645 million, and the Navy estimated final building expenditures at $4.73 billion, $1.52 billion for the nuclear power system, $697 million for ordnance, electromagnetic catapult and arresting gear systems, and the new dual-band radar were not included in that amount. Except for the nuclear power system, all of these expenses would skyrocket. The new radar would cost 138% more than the Navy had anticipated in 2008. The new arresting gear is 123% more expensive and the added charges are 111% for the new catapult. By the time the Ford was formally given to the Navy, the expenses had risen by more than $720 million. Despite the fact that construction on the ship continued, the need to break down and rebuild previously finished sections of the Ford to meet changes in these systems had knocked down consequences due to rethinking of designs, changes in building timelines, and the need to break down and rebuild already completed elements of the Ford. Alarm bells The first indication that prices might climb occurred six months after the Pentagon requested the first large sum of money for the Ford. When it told Congress in its budget file for the next fiscal year that Ford would cost just under $10.49 billion to build and equip, the Navy's $10.49 billion acquisition cost, which did not include $3 billion already spent from its research budget, which is separate from its construction and equipment fund, assumed the Ford would take 42.7 million man-hours to build far less than the $43.1 million expected for the USS George H.W. Bush, which was under construction at the time, or the $45 million required for the USS Ronald Reagan when it was commissioned in 2003. The Contract 
In September 2008, the Navy awarded Newport News Shipbuilding the $4.9 billion contract to build the Ford. The shipyard had finished a fourth of the modules from which the carrier would be constructed at the time, while General Atomics had completed the initial phase of testing to determine how well the catapult could handle the high speed of plane launches. Land-based testing was already two years behind schedule. The Navy increased the anticipated cost of the Ford by more than $1 billion to $11.53 billion in its February 2010 budget proposal. The Navy updated Newport News Shipbuilding's construction contract a year and a half later. In July 2011, adding $504 million to cover ongoing engineering work. Delays and rising costs Even though the Navy's latest budget proposal in February 2012 predicted the Ford would cost $790 million more than the estimate it provided just two years prior, increasing the total to $12.32 billion, the Navy maintained it was on track for delivery in 2015. Much of the difficulty stemmed from front-end difficulties, such as design, planning, and delivering material to the yard. The arresting gear would be laid to the shipyard due to testing delays and a redesign of its water twister shock absorber. According to Navy budget papers, the cost of the arresting gear had more than quadrupled by that time, from an initial estimate of $75 million to just under $167 million. The whole cost came to $149 million in the end, according to budget documents. The cost of the electromagnetic catapult system had risen from $318 million to $425 million. This system, which was scheduled to be delivered to the shipyard by 2011, ran into technical issues. The total cost of the system was $664 million while the Navy's revised development timeline planned for land-based testing to continue through 2014. It was still many years behind schedule. However, it wasn't until the spring of 2013 that the Navy eventually admitted that the Ford would not be launched on time, with the crucial milestone arriving four months later in November. Delays and commissioning of an unfinished ship by the spring of 2013, the Ford had reached a little more than halfway point in its development. The delivery date was once again pushed back, this time to February 2016. The planned cost of $12.8 billion was also up, another $500 million higher than the Navy's projection from a year ago. The major reason for the delay was the delay in receiving the electromagnetic catapult and arresting gear which required more than 50 changes before shipboard testing could begin. Land-based testing of the catapult, arresting gear, and radar had to be performed before they could be mounted, causing more delays. The catapult's testing was still going on at the moment, and it wouldn't be completed until early 2016, seven years late and just around the time the Ford was meant to be delivered under the revised timetable. President Donald Trump's helicopter arrived on the flight deck of the Ford, still at a shipyard outfitting pier. On a hot July day in 2017, to commission the carrier, the ship had been delayed for two years, and four of its essential systems, the catapult, arresting gear, radar, and weapons elevators, had yet to be completed. There were about 9,000 items that needed to be finished or repaired. The Navy pushed back the target date for the Ford's first deployment to 2023, then finally to 2024. That's all for today, folks. We hope you have found the video informative and fun to watch. Also, tell us in the comment section your views about the most advanced aircraft carrier in the world. And if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon next to it for the regular updates. Goodbye.